Preacher time. Y'all ready? All right, we do always rise and give honor to the Most High, Y'all, His Son, Yeshua, the True Messiah. Always to all of y'all divine preachers in every place. Preaching, teaching, living God's divine word. I always say, beloved ministers that labor with me in this part of the vineyard, whom are not ashamed to call brother, and could disagree to them their respective places. I always say, those that are watching by way of live internet, to the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentile, could disagree to them their respective places. <clears throat> As we often say last, never least, to the way of Yah Synagogue. Papa, I'm you all in your perspective places. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen. Before we came on, had nothing come on. When we go off, absolutely ain't nothing else coming on. If they're not teaching Kodesh, living a clean, sanctified life, then people ain't in nothing and they hadn't heard nothing. This is an attempt to collect a debt. Whatever you hypocrite, false pretend, backbite, mumbling, grumble against will be used in that collection of a debt. These messages are always being recorded for quality assurance. They make sure no side does get cut with nobody, but everybody got to come in, Brother Red. Straight, narrow path. All right, St. John 6 and 44. Wonderful, wonderful Savior. Again, for those that just came in, if you wet, they do have some coffee if you needed to heat up. I don't want y'all to get sick. I know they had the air on in here as well. All right, this is St. John 6 and 44. Listen to the book. No man can come to me. No man can come to me. Except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. Except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. And I will raise him up in the last days. It is written in the prophets. What happened, son? And they shall be all taught of God. And they shall all be taught of God. Uh huh. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, coming unto me. That's why we hear. Let's look at Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. Listen to the book. Hold on, we missing somebody. This mic is on. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Listen. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse, turn them down just a little bit. Chapter 11, verse 1. Amen. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly. And? Indeed, bear with me. Why? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. What are you, son? I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Yes. For I have espoused you to one husband. For I have promised you to one husband. Husband. For what reason? That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Something to consider. So Paul began to talk about a feeling or emotions that he had taken on concerning you. What will a man do when he have a jealous wife? Will he allow her to talk to other men? He'd be kind of watchful. He probably would check her phone. He probably would leave home and tell her something and tell her he'll be back at 6 and come back at 5.30 just in case. Because he said, now I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. So you start to talk about that strong feeling of a control and making sure that nothing comes in and hamper or break that kind of connection that a husband and a wife have. Remember the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, at verse 1 to be fine. Listen. And God spake all these words, saying. Turn them down a little bit. Come on. I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He said, I am the Lord your God that have brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Y'all hear that? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Come on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Or any likeness of anything that yes. is in heaven above. Yes. Or that is in the earth beneath. Yes. Or that is in the water under the earth. Yes. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Listen. For I, the Lord thy God. Am a what? Jealous God. I'm a jealous God. He let her know, if I've taken you to be mine now, I'm real funny about anything you do. I want you to have no, since I'm a God, I don't want you to have no other God before me. Since I'm a husband, 
I want you to have no other man in front of me. If I tell you something, I'd rather you move by what I say before you move for another man, what another man say. He said, I want you to know, I don't want no idols. I don't want you to keep no old pictures. Because in the mother of God, you got them going to be old pictures. A jealous man, he's not going to let his keep no pictures of nobody else. Prom day, somebody, this is somebody, my first boyfriend, that's definitely I want him gone. I definitely want that nigga out of him. This is right here, a, a picture, a, a memento of a boyfriend I had who a real deal to me. I want that gone. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. He said, I don't want you to have no other God, nothing, no likeness. I don't want you to have no kind of relationship with nobody. Anything X with you in it, I don't want it. None of it. Think about a jealous man. Think about it. a jealous man. How is he going to be concerning his wife? Her past is always going to be something he's got to deal with. Come on, brother. Spread it my mind. Come on. Because you're always looking at any time you see her with somebody else that she said, oh, you be like, who is that you talking to? Oh, that's my boyfriend. We were dating in college for four years. I'm watching that nigga. And I'm like, that, who is that? You, who is that? Oh, that's my first love. And he was real special. I'm watching that nigga. If you start to really look at a pattern, you start looking, pick me at the, um, at the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God. Then we start looking at Paul talking to us concerning how he's jealous of us with a godly jealous. Because I've espoused you to one, which means I got to make sure that nobody else get in between this relationship. I got to make sure that there's no breakage. I got to make sure that you stay totally focused on me and me alone. Y'all got it? Listen to this. This is the 18th chapter of the book of, Le- of Leviticus at verse 1. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. What did he tell him? Speaking to the children the other of Israel. Hold on, he got me the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. I'm sorry, the 12th chapter. 12th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, 12 and 1. Hold that for me. Let's just look at some things. We start talking about this jealousy. Isn't that right about a jealous man and his rage? Okay? Listen. Speak unto the Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them. And say unto them. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Oh, we'll just say husband. Come on. After the doings of the land of Egypt. After the doings of the who? The land of Egypt. What happened? Wherein ye dwelt. What you want me to do? Shall ye not do. Because now you're looking at a relationship that's formed between you and I. Just like when a man, when a man marries a woman, if she's got a past history of boyfriend or men that she's dated or exes, you're not planning on her doing whatever she was doing with him in it. You just see your wife. Just say, I've taken my wife, and I've taken her on. And I let her know, before when we was kind of talking, she look at, well, you ain't like you my husband, I tell you something. I kind of eat a little bit of that, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have real commitment, I see you kind of out with somebody. Since I really don't have a commitment, I really can't have a whole lot of sales situation, just a lot of disapproval. But now when you look at since we finna move into, it's going to be just you and I now. Y'all got me? This going to be a monogamous relationship. You understand what you used to do before this. Don't come tell me about, well, back when we were first talking, you didn't used to have a problem. I would be talking to my exes or whatever I had pictures of. Not then, but since I've taken you, just like he let them know, I'm the Lord that God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So I'm not planning on you doing what you used to do back then. You know what I'm saying? This is what, What's funny about this whole situation, it's no different than how we do. When you first meet a woman and you just meet her, and you might see spots alike, you might see her, she might have a guy. How many women before they got married had guy friends? When you got married, when you first started talking, he might look, she might see saying that's just her friend, but you watch the behavior to see is this a real friend or this, they like real friend, they just got a lot in common, there's nothing sexual going on. But when you start to take on their relationship, move closer, you say a marriage is going to be founded. You're looking at, you're going to have to break off on that. Things change because you look at our, our commitment has changed now. You might start saying, well, I mean, it was good with you before. I wasn't married to you before. Mm. We weren't in a committed relationship before, but since the relationship has changed, you understand, you're going to have to break that off. This is what he was showing us. You know why we, this is why he has such a problem with us. If you look at the situation from a standard of a man and a woman, this really not hard to kind of understand a formula, how it formulates. Before I married you, you could do that. I didn't care about you had a whole wall of pictures of your exes. I didn't care if you kept mementos and stuff that y'all did when y'all used to go out together, showing where all y'all went and what all y'all did and these special items. 
because we didn't have a committed relationship. See, when they were in Egypt, that was not a committed relationship. So then I look at, that's your past life. Y'all got me? But now since we moved into a commitment, since I brought you out and take you for my own, just like he said, this cause should a man leave his father, mother, and cleave to his wife. I'll take you for a relationship now, for a marriage. I'm not looking for you to do what you used to do with your ex-boyfriends. You got a friend, y'all close, y'all all the way walk up and hug every time y'all see each other. We get married, I ain't looking for you to be hugging nobody. Anybody be hugged, I want, that's what he was telling Israel. I don't want nobody else before me. I don't want no likeness. I don't want nothing that reminds you of them. Y'all kind of see it from a different standpoint now. When you start to take on all these little behaviors and you start to take on um, past things you had, uh, religious uh, aspects of behaviors you had, or taking um, symbols or attitudes you had before, it's like when you first talk to a woman, she might have a little something she might do. A little something about it, you really don't kind of like it, but you don't really say nothing because we really haven't solidified the relationship. But I know I don't like that. I know I don't like it. And once we move a little further, I'm going to let you, I'm going to call you on it. Mm. I'm going to call y'all. I mean, as a man, you look at, I'm going to get you. I'm going to wait. And once I solidify the relationship, I'm going to let you know. You know, like you be the, nah, nah, nah. I don't like that. I'm telling you, now, I don't like it. I ain't never liked it. I ain't never liked it. And I don't want you doing it no more. What do you mean? We're not going to be going back. I'm telling you up front, I don't like it. But when you first meet the person, there's a lot of stuff you can't say and you can't do. Because you hadn't sealed the deal. Even Paul talked about um, how he made himself all things to who, brother? Um, all men. He started describing to them that are under the law and, those, and them that are without law. He said, as without law, yet not without the law of God. So he didn't come putting impression upon it because I'm trying to gain you. I didn't push law down your throat at the first initial point. Because first of all, I need to get this relationship that we both on the same point and saying we can be companions. Now I can come along and let you know. And when you say, well, you didn't put those things on me, I can say, but you notice something. Then you notice that I didn't do it. We first went out to dinner. We sat down. You ate pork. You ordered pork. I didn't order no pork. So when I started to call you back, let's look at like people said, Paul said he didn't have no law. Paul never said that. He said, I can't you ass without law. He said, yeah, not without the law, which I never fractured the laws. I knew I had to get you. Huh? Paul told you being, what was it? Crafty. Crafty. What did he say? I got you. I got you with, I got you with the seed. That's how the, that's how the serpent got Eve in the garden. He said, so me, me being crafty, I came to you and got you. I was never without law. I just didn't put that on you because I first had to make sure we can go further in this relationship if I start giving out these rules. This is how some brothers now don't have a woman. First they do, they meet and lay everything down at the front. And he got a name or her phone number. How I'm telling you, tell you about how you, Hey, how you doing? Hey, let me tell you about me now. Woman, she can't wear no pants, can't wear no earrings, can't eat no pork. First thing, she don't even know you. You just spoke to her. So where he looked at, I never changed what it was I'd done. I just had to wait till we made sure first we can move into a commitment. Hold you got Exodus Apostle chapter 1830. 1930. Y'all all right tonight? Amen. Exodus the Apostle chapter 19, verse 30. We'll kick a little out on the back of the men. I just want to make sure they'll dry off and kind of warm up and make sure they're all right. Listen. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people. This is the 19, 19? 19, 19 and 30. 18, 30 is what I want. No verse 30. Ain't no 30. What am I looking at? 1930. Come on, read it. 1926. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. 1730. Exodus 1730. Listen to the book. And the times of this ignorance. See this? Listen to what happened now. At the time of this what? Ignorance. At the time of this what? Ignorance. What did happen, son? God winked at. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what do we find this as? I overlook. I overlook some things which you at the first. If we go back earlier and further up in this um in this segment of this reading, you'll find that Paul came by and he found this scripture. What was on it, brother? Whom you what? 
Because they were stupid. CJ shook his head and said yes. If you're ignorant, always remember, whenever it tells you ignorance, it means you're without knowledge of. So when he went by, Paul said, I saw, I held your devotion. What was their devotion? What were they saying? A charge to keep I have? Amazing grace? What were they singing? He began to look at their religious servitudes. He said, I held your devotion. He saw their affection of worship. He called it their devotion. He said, to the unknown God whom you ignorantly worship, which would make no sense, because the God that came and called us out of Egypt, the first thing when Moses even said, they're going to want to know what is thy name. Isn't that right? He let them know what was his name forever. So he let them know the importance of, this is even something that even shows us just how God was never in a lot of things we did in these Christian apostolic churches. Because Paul went by and he let them know, if you ignorantly don't know what his name is, yet you got idols and affections of worship, What's actually the gratification for you of serving God? Or what does God give you in, a, in, in, in signifying a gratification or a committed relationship? Because we don't know God's name, you don't know God. Isn't that right? So now he's starting to talk about when he saw them doing these different things, he started to let them know at one time, God suffered all men to walk after their own heart. Back up at verse 26. Amen. 24. Make it 24. Listen. God that made the world. Listen, God that made the world. And all things therein. And listen, and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. He's Lord of heaven and earth. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Come on. Neither is worship with men's hands. Come on. As though he needed anything. As though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Listen. And hath made of one blood. And hath made of one blood. All nations of men. For to, to do what? To dwell on the face of, all, of the earth. To dwell on all the face of the earth. And what has he appointed? And hath determined the times before appointed. Yeah. And the bounds of their habitation. You hear that? God already purposed where we were going to be at. No bounds or restrictions. That's what he told Moses to put around the mountain. What did he told him to set? Set boundaries around it. To keep the people from touching it. God put boundaries around all these races to put them in separate places that they should sit and they should dwell now. He made all men. Out of one blood, he made all the men that dwell on all the face of the earth. He set the bounds. The people that, that say that they originated from, um, from Alaska, God appointed them to be there. Russia, any parts of Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, and in, over here in this God-forsaken place they call America. Or North America, whatever they call themselves as a continent. But the thing become, God already appointed the bounds of their habitations. Listen. That they should seek the Lord. That they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him. Uh-huh. And find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Listen. For in him we live Listen. and move and have our being. We talked about that, didn't we? He realized that's how we move and have our being, in him. Come on. As certain also of your own poets have said. Come on. For we are also his offspring. Come on. For as much then as we are the offspring of God. Yeah. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold. The divine nature is like unto gold. So that's why we shouldn't have it said no. I don't want you to think I'm like your ex-boyfriend. You got some women, their ex-boyfriends, let them do a whole lot of states. I don't want you to think I'm like them. You know, I don't, don't, you can't walk on me. Ah, I be playing kick me. I ain't like them. Don't, don't, don't think I'm like them because I'm not like them. Whatever you do, don't come up trying to have behaviors with me you had with your ex. Whatever it was you did with your ex, don't do it with me. So what he did was start putting down restrictions and laws saying, I'm going to tell you what I like. I'm going to tell you what I expect my wife to do. i tell you how I expect my house to be ran. And when anything goes differently, this is what you can look for from me. I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cast you out. And I'm going to go far away from you. Okay. This is what you do. You start letting the person know, since we're going to be married, and since we married, this is what we're going to do. He started giving up rules and regulations before we even got in this house. Because the first thing they did be with any woman. Last thing you want to do is get in somebody's house, they start telling you about all these rules. Tell me before I get there. Before we went, he said, and I want you to start doing them before we get there. So when you get him in the home, you already know how the home should be ran. You start to look at the whole situation a little differently now. Huh? So when it came down, like we were reading him on last night, we started talking about um, when he told Ezekiel to dig through the wall. Come in and open the door and you'll look. And you can see why I left my home. And now when you look at it, man, look. But this thing about this, the person you're going to call in that you're going to let see that you left your home got to know already what kind of guy you are. Because I just walk in your house and I see the pictures and I see all these things in him. I mean, why you left? But knowing you, and knowing how you are and looking at what your wife have committed or done, 
it makes sense. I know the type of person you are, so I already know this makes sense why you're gone. Because people talk. People are going to have things they're going to say, so I want to make sure when I do do what I do, somebody can come and testify that know me and say, no, it ain't what you're thinking. Bro, man, this is how he is. I know he told her. I knew that she knew about it, and this is what she did. I can't even blame a brother for leaving. Come on, listen. Today. I'm sorry, I lost my spot. 1729. Thank you, Brandon. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, yeah. we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold yeah. or silver mm-hmm. or stone graven by art and man's device. And didn't he tell her already at the beginning not to do that? He told, me, he told us that in the beginning, didn't he? I'm the Lord thy God. He said, and he let you know this is the stuff I don't want. You should have no other gods before me. I don't want any likeness, anything of it. Don't do it. Because you know why? I'm jealous. Mm. I'm real jealous. Come on, son. And the times of this ignorance, what happened? God winked at it. God winked at it. What happened, son? But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That's what we look at. What you used to do before that point, now you got to repent. I overlooked some things at the first because I realized you didn't know me. But now since you know me, there are some things now I'm not going to hold you as they say guiltless. Like if my wife go and make me a sandwich right now, I tell them, home, go make me a sandwich. And she come back and they got what on it? Mayonnaise. And then she want to know why I'm all upset, why I'm, uh, why I'm so angry with her, why, I'm, why my wrath so hot and kindled. Because I'm constantly looking at, you should have known me. This is what he told us in the book of Isaiah. They didn't realize he was trying to let them know. He talked about how the ox knoweth his master and the asses, the asses, the ox knoweth his owner, the asses master crib. But Israel, they don't even consider. My wife should consider. Before she go in there and make that sandwich, put that mayonnaise on there, she got to consider. When I put that mayonnaise and I bring it to him. I'm already ready for his wrath. I'm already ready and know at this point I'm in violation and he's going to be transgression. Isn't that right? I already know now what the penalty is going to be. This man going to cut me down. He's going to be highly upset with me. This going to be a big mess. But then what's she going to do? Poke it up. You shouldn't be mad at me. People make mistakes. But you already know before we get to this point. That's the purpose of you come back and you regurgitate and you continue to tell people things. So when it happens... You can't go to say you didn't know. You just got to say, I willfully what? Transgress. We say sin. Or willingly transgress. This is the thing we have to consider when we make decisions with God. Once God had told us the things that he like and don't like, and then he started to let you know what's the restitution point of that, then you have to make a decision. When you cross that line, you got to be ready for whatever the penalty is. Just like if a man going to go rob a bank, he's going to take a gun with him. There's some things you're going to have to consider. Along with you looking at, the only reason I'm going to rob this bank because I look at, it's got a lot of money. A lot of money in this bank. It's a knockover. I got to consider playing uh, what's going to be the best time to hit it. How many security guards might be there? What's gonna, what we going to use to go there and drive in? How many people I'm going to take? Who's going to be watching out? Then I got to consider a getaway plan. I also got to put on option of if anything goes wrong inside this bank, before I get shot, I got to be willing to shoot somebody. If I come in this bank, I walk up, get on the ground, put your hand down, give me everything you got. What if that nigga said, I ain't getting up nothing? Yeah. So I got to count this already in the plan. Yeah. I got to count or just say he a hero guy. He the type of guy, he going to try to see if he can do something and maybe I don't pay attention and try to subdue me some kind of way. Not. So I got to weigh this in my hand that if anything go wrong, I'm going to have to wind up shooting somebody. Mm. Because I came to get the money because I'm looking at the reward of the money. At the same time, I got to consider, if that go wrong and I shoot it and I get caught and we don't get away, I got to consider the, the severity of the whole thing now. Because I'm going to have a couple of charges depending on what state. I'm going to get that strong on robbery charge. I'm going to get that assault charge. In some state, they're going to get me because it's illegal to even have a handgun. And some state get you, they give you a year for every bullet in now. So you got to be able to count the book. You, you got to count the cost when you make these decisions. So just like in a marriage, a person has to really sit down and consider, you're in a marriage with the Most High God tonight. Now you got to consider when you make decisions, you got to be ready for the severity of these decisions. Once he's told you what he like and doesn't like, what he requires and what he don't want you doing, once you infracture or infringe upon these things, you got to be ready for the consequences. 
if anything come up, you got to look at, can you, will, are you willing to stand for what decisions you make? Come on, finish this up. My friend, what I had you hold up? Leviticus 18. Leviticus, finish in Leviticus 18. And come on, three. and the other one had me Deuteronomy 12 and 1. He got me at Leviticus chapter 18. Let's start at verse 1. The other one got me Deuteronomy 12 and 1. Amen. Come on, trying to get out my time ticking on me. Amen. Listen to the book. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them. And say unto them. I am the Lord your God. What happened, son? After the doings of the land of Egypt. What happened, son? Wherein ye dwelt. Wherein you dwelt. Shall ye not do. What happened? And after the doings of the land of Canaan. What happened, son? Whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Now, this is not unreasonable when you look at a marriage relationship, a committed relationship that a man will tell a woman. He don't want her doing what she used to do at her parents' house. He don't want her doing what she used to do with her ex. And when he move her, he don't want her getting caught up with the people in the apartments where they stay. He don't want her getting caught up with people in the neighborhood. I like my wife to stay at my house and stay out of other people's house. I don't want you doing what other people's wife do. I don't want you trying to look like other people's wife. Yet. I want you looking like I like. Because sometimes you'll see somebody put on stuff and go to her and say, I don't like that. Well, I like. So you try to look at if I tell you I don't like it and I tell you what I like and you don't put that on, it's only obvious for me to think that you're going after another God. Because you always got to remember, I'm jealous. You got to consider that. If I tell you what I like and you don't put that on, but you put on something I tell you I don't like, it's only natural you're trying to attract somebody different. Let's just use the analogy. That makes sense? So when God tell a woman, um, a woman should not put on pants, neither a man put on a dress. It because I hate a man with a dress on. I just, what a reader, I don't like it. It just, it just really irritates me. So if a man put on a dress, what are you trying to do? He irritate me. It's an abomination. So I really don't like a woman with pants on. I think a woman ought to wear a dress. I think it looks more feminine. I think it fits her. I think it's more attractive. That's the only reason why I tell her to do it. So when she put on pants, it's only natural I'm going to look at. She ain't trying to get me, Boston. She don't want me. She wants somebody else. You know who she wants? She wants somebody that like pants on a man, on a woman. If a man put on a woman dress, he's not, he not trying to be inside what I like or what I desire. He's trying to attract somebody who's drawn to a man with a woman apparel on. Make sense? I don't like a woman with gold on. I like a woman without those metals on her body. I like a woman that don't put makeup on her face and try to put all this stuff and pancake it on her face. But then when she puts it on, earring, and she put on this, the makeup and she said, well, I mean, I just feel pretty when I do this. It's only natural that you provoking me to anger because I'm a jealous God, mm. which means you ain't trying to track me. Mm. You're trying to track somebody else. Yeah. And you always right. got to keep on table now. Yeah. I'm jealous. You've got to keep on tape. I'm just, see, when you start to describe our relationship from that standpoint, you kind of get a little more understanding about it. So anything I tell you to do, the only reason I tell you to do, that's what I like. All that's what I like. When I take a woman out to eat, I, I like for her to eat. Um, if she's going to eat fish, I like her to eat something with scales on it. And it had a fin. If she's going to eat something that got a hoof, I like for her to eat it, whether the animal was, that is divided. And the animal that had it chew the cud, when they chew it and they regurgitate up and take it back down. I rather see like, if I take a woman, that's what I'm going to want her to eat. You know why I want to do it? Because that's what I like. So if I take a woman out to eat, and she order, and I say, well, sweetie, what you want? Give what you want. Can I get some catfish and uh, bring me a pork chop? I'm watching them. Because at this point I'm looking at, who you trying to attract with what you eating? Because it's not attractive to me. Y'all got me? So when you start to put it in just layman terms of how we do things as people, now you start to kind of look at it from God's standpoint. I told you how I am. The only reason I give you these things because I'm jealous. And you know what else I know, Leon? When you do these things, you don't attract other people. When you put gold on for a woman, just look at it from that standpoint. She put that gold on, anybody, I don't care, it picks up your eye and it catches you. He knows that you wind up attracting the wrong people. When a woman look plain, Nobody pay no attention. You're inconspicuous. Isn't that right? So at that point, you don't attract those different men. Because a jealous man, gonna, so you know, it's some jealous man. A woman can't get her hair fixed. Because she get it fixed, it's going to be down. It's going to be pretty. Some nigga going to be looking at it. So what do you want her to do? I want you to cover your hair up. 
You got guys like that. You got guys don't want their wife to put on nothing to beautify themselves. Because you go out there, it's going to be people going to be trying to antagonize you. And see, the law says sinners entice thee. Same time. Now, what you going to do? What a woman going to do with all these guys here? You so look good. Woo, you pretty. Man, I tell you, the way you, he looking at, I don't want that. Because you know what? It's going to sway you. Mm-hmm. When I say something to you, just like you want to just tell me to come in, you want me, or just tell me, uh, um, you don't like the way I look. Yeah, ain't nobody else complaining. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Now, already, that's going to spark your anger. The last thing a man want to hear from me why he tell us something here, other folk like it. Who is other folk? Who is other folks? Because my rage is only getting increased. I told you before, before we got married, how was I? Jealous. I told you, I'm real jealous. So I don't want you coming flaunting in my face because I already know if you're doing it, you're only doing it because you're not trying to attract me. You're trying to attract somebody because I told you I don't like it. Y'all got me? So now you start looking at all the commandments God gave us when he started giving to you. He wanted you to see that I'm jealous. Give me that 20 chapter again. He just told us in the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus how after the doings of Egypt shall you not do. All the stuff you did in your past, he looked at when a man would take a woman, and typically a man would take a woman, it was years ago, it was, you had to be a virgin. But even we started to consider there are people, actions, and society have loosened itself so much. That's hard to find. So you'll take a person, although they don't meet that first criteria of being a virgin, but you'll do just like how the Lord do, only if you'll be estranged from your lust. The things you used to do, you understand, when he took us, he knew we weren't no virgin. We had been in Egypt. We had built pyramids. We had built Sphinx. <laughs> we wrote hieroglyphics. We did worship to their God. There are things we did. That would be abomination to, to the, the and things that the Egyptians said was abomination were things that God liked. Things that God liked was an abomination to the Egyptians. So he knew when he took us, we weren't a virgin. Y'all got me? So his only thing was, I can get past that. But I'm going to really need you to forget your past. I'm going to really need you to forget your past. Your past can't be in our future. That was the whole purpose of taking you and say, sometimes what guys will do, if they got a woman that's got a real high reputation, they'll move somewhere so they don't want to hear people talk about her. Not in every case. There are people that will move. There are people that got bad reputation in places. They'll say, let me move. There are people that gotten so many felonies in place. They say, let me move to keep me from trying to get other felonies. Ain't that right to stay out of trouble? I move. So what he looked at to keep you out of trouble. The only way you were gonna do what he asked you to do, I'm gonna have to move you from the complete neighborhood. I gotta take you somewhere else. And now when I take you here, if you find people here that arise in these different things, that's why he told you don't make no lead with them. Because if you go here and I know, and these people have the same behavior you used to have, I already know what you're gonna do. Don't make no lead with them. If they come over there, the first thing they do, they start bringing him, hey, I brought you this nice little cross. Quick, tear it down. Yeah. Quick, tear it down. Because sometimes you got people coming and welcoming you to neighborhoods. Uh-huh. Hey, I noticed you were new in the neighborhood. And I just want to bring you in because everybody in the neighborhood pretty much, we got one of these on our house. Some community, they'll do that. You'll get these, they'll have these covenants. Any community saying, here, do we want everybody in the community have to have this? Everybody in the house have to look like this? Everybody in the yard have to be like this? Everybody have to cut on these days? God said, I, when you go there, I want you to be different from these people. He said, I want you to put a difference. Put a difference. Isn't that right? So people look at, when they come along, they see everybody else. How they say, your house don't look like their house. Something's different. So although you sit in the midst of all these people in society, you should still look different from them. Y'all got me? Because who you're committed to and who you're supposed to be marrying and married to already requires something different from you. Because he don't want you to look like others. He said, that's why I serve you from them. Because I don't want you to look like them. I want you to look like I like. When he started to tell Ezekiel to go down, uh, Jeremiah to go down to the part of house, part of house, what did he tell me to look at? What did he find? He saw the potter sitting down working and work on the wheel. And you know what he made the vessel to? To his liking. You know, if you walk by that shop and you look down, you say, that's ugly. I wouldn't buy that. I wouldn't have it in my house. It's ugly. And you know, he'd be looking at you thinking, I didn't even make it for your house. When I made it, you weren't even in mine. You know, when I made it, I wasn't even trying to make it for you to like it. I was making something I like. Makes sense. He said, then I seen him get it and mar it in his hand. 
and took it and said that he fashioned it again. To what was it again? To his liking. And he said, son of man, he said, is not the house of Israel just like this clay in the potter's hand to me? Which means you had a shape and a form before, but I tore it down because I didn't like it. Anything you like that came out of Egypt, I let you keep those I didn't. I took away. He loves taking bombing from him. We took embalming from him. But I want you to leave his speech. I want you to leave his pyramid. We don't even build pyramids. God don't like it. I don't want you to build a pyramid. I want you to build a house. Isn't that right? His pyramid, the way he kept his dead work, the way he kept his arts. God, I don't want that. Isn't that right? I serve you from them. There are things we take from these people that we can use. That thing God said, I don't like it. I don't like that. I don't want you to do that. So this is, a, this is just something I want y'all to consider. Look at this 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. We're talking about after the doings of Egypt, how he didn't want you to do them. Isn't that right? He still got in the 12th chapter of the book of um, Deuteronomy. This is the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. Jump down and give me um, verse 18. Listen. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightnings. And the noise of the trumpet. And the noise of the trumpet. And the mountain smoking. And the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it. And what happened, son? They were moved. They were removed. What happened, son? And stood afar off. And what happened? And they said unto Moses. What did they say unto Moses? Speak thou with us. Yes. And we will hear. And we will hear. But let not God speak with us. But let not God speak with us. Lest we die. That's what a jealous man do. He'll kill you. A jealous man will kill you. So what do you think I'm going to do if I catch you doing any things I told you not to do? I catch you with a God. And I'm a God. I supposed to be your only husband. And if I catch you with another husband, what you think I'm going to do? What you think I'm going to do if I catch you in the days I tell you I want you exclusive to me, you ain't there for me, you out there with somebody else? What you think I'm going to do? Why y'all think they sat there and they saw the mountain shaking? They saw the smoke and they heard the thunder. He was showing you the jealous man wrath. This is my wrath. This is my anger when, when you don't do what I tell you. Some of these women, how many of y'all husbands can get some real anger if you don't do something he told you to do? Something you consider, because this is what he wanted you to know. What's the penalty of severity if I don't do it? What if I don't want to do it? You ain't my daddy. I make the mountain start shaking. I make smoke start coming. I make lightning start flashing. And when the people seen it, they were removed. What happened, son? And they said unto Moses, And they speak, said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. Speak who? Speak thou with us. Lest what happen? And we will hear. Yes. But let not God speak with us. Why, son? Lest we die. That's what a jealous man will do to a woman. If I find that you don't do what I told you to do, if I find out you're doing it to somebody else, okay. I'm subject to kill you. This is a committed relationship we got. See, one thing you can rest assured he looks at on his end, you ain't never got to worry about me looking at another woman. You ain't never got to worry about another people even remotely trying to pull me to him. The only thing that I'm attracted to it's people that look like you. That's how a Gentile get in. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like. Anybody that want to get my attention, anybody want to catch my eye, you know what they got to do? Do what I like. You know what my eyes will be? Over the righteous. You know what my ears going to be attended to? To their prayer. But anybody that don't do what I tell them to do, my face against them. My face not in you for your good, it's against you. So anything you got to worry about, you got to worry about somebody that will look like you. You ain't never got to worry about nobody that look like them pulling me, persuading me. Y'all hear me? Enticing me, seducing me. Because I've already told you what I like. Huh? This is important for us because he told us, the year of my friend, if you do whatsoever. Henceforth, I don't call you, what was it? Sir, but I call you what? Why? For all things I heard of my father, I've done what? I let you know what I like. I told you what kind of dress code. I told you what days. I told you what to cook. I love these dishes. These are my favorite dishes. I told you everything that, that you need to know if you want to try to keep me attracted to you or try to get a committed relationship from me. When you look at this at the natural, this is not hard to translate when you start looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. We're looking at a man that has told a woman everything he liked. I told you what I desire. I told you if you do this, don't worry about it. Why would you go do and cook what they cook when I told you I don't like it? Why would you go out and dress like them when I told you I don't like that? That's how whores look to me. 
That's how prostitutes look to me. That's how crackhead look to me. I don't like that. Why would you dress any other way than what I would like? Why would you look any other way than what I like? Why would you go anywhere else that I tell you I don't like? Why would you do that? Then you want to know, you mad with me? Why you ain't speaking? You upset, ain't you? For real? It's just like in our relationship, we can know when a husband or wife upset. And we already know they're upset. I know it because of, exactly. So you know why God not answering. You know why you not why God not hearkening nothing that you're seeking from or what or giving you what you like. Because he's looking at you hadn't done nothing I asked you. You don't even look the way I told you to look. You don't even perform the way I told you to perform. You keep trying to do things like them. That's why I say after the doors of these people, shall you not do? Come on to the 12th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Other brother, give me the 4th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. 4 and about 22. Listen. 4 and 22? 4 and 22. Amen. Listen. But I must die in this land. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan. I must not go over Jordan. But ye shall go over and possess that good land. Come on. Take heed unto yourselves. Yeah. Lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God. Y'all hear what he told you to do? Make sure y'all take heed to yourself lest you forget your marriage vows now. What happened, son? Which he made with you. Which he made with you. And make you a graven image. And make you a what? A graven image. What else, son? Or the likeness of anything. Yeah. Which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. Listen. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. The Lord thy God is a what? Consuming fire. What kind of fire? A consuming fire. What else about him, Brandon? Even a jealous God. Why would that man keep telling me about this? <laughs> Whenever you see my rail, you know I'm hot. I'm telling you before you do it, that's what makes it so bad. So when sometimes, like, even when I counsel husband and wife, sometimes if a wife come to me about something, a lot of times what you learn to do is, let me get both of you. Let me get both of you. Because if a woman tell you he be upset, he going off, you want to try to find out why. Was it something that provoked him to push him to that situation? And a lot of times people don't tell it. Even God told us to do I think about the sixth chapter of the book of Michael. He told us to go. He said, go and contend out before the mountain. People that come there, they won't get nobody neutral. God told he said, go, he said, go contend out before the mountain. If I did something, he said, tell it. Tell it if I'd done something. Is it not right, this, the, 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 the response that you get for the action that you rendered out? A lot of times, people don't actually want to sit down and be honest and fair, especially when it comes down to God. When people tell you what God hadn't done, when people tell you God hadn't blessed and God hadn't saved them, they won't tell you why. Mm. They're not going to tell you some earring stuff. What it get me sometimes I meet with husband and wife when you get them, when you hear one side and you get both together. It's usually a missing part I'm going to get when I get both of them together. It's a missing part I'm going to get. When you bring that missing part up, they look at me like, like, what? People intentionally leave things out. If you ask people why they ain't saying, they'll leave stuff. Because I go to service. I pay my tithe, but it'd be some other things you ain't doing that you leave out. Y'all got me? Just like when he told me in Matthew 23, 23, well, he began to tell them, Matthew 23, 23, what he told them? Who, what he told him? What, you hypocrite. You pay tithes of what? Mint, anise, and cumin. These are fragrances. These are uh, 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 foods. He said, but you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. See what I'm saying? These people pay tithes. And you know what they're going to hold you to? People pay tithes and going to hold him to what? What are they going to hold him to? What are people that pay tithes going to hold God to? They're going to hold God down to uh, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse so there might be meat in my house. Prove me this day that I won't pull you out of blessing. It won't be room enough to receive. Mm -hmm. They're going to hold him to that. Because that's what God said now. And what it is it is, I'm always broke. So now he started to tell them, one of you Pharisees, scribes, and hypocrites, he said, because you pay tithe of anise, mint, and cumin. He said, but you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, peace, and mercy. These you ought to have done and not to have left the others 
It never say if you pay if you had judgment, mercy, and peace, you had to pay no tithe. God could have never told you that. He said you still should have paid your tithe. But what we start looking at is, I pay my tithes. I know I pay my tithe. I, I was always ready to pay my tithe. What I do on judgment, though? You talking about the song? <laughs> what you do on, on mercy? The song. How you do? You know what I'm saying? Think about how we do. Let's just be honest. For those that are actually looking at the time frame you're in and where you had not received the spirit, you're holding God to something. And the only reason you bring your complaint that you're not saved, a lot of it's looking at, well, I know I do. I know I do. There are some other, there are some other things you omit. Just like in a relationship here, when he was letting them know, you've omitted some things. These you ought to have done, and you still should have paid the time. What we start doing is, if I do nine, that's just a good, that's just a good to do in ten. Versus, if you do nine, you've broken ten. Mm. You've done nine, you've broken ten. Huh? Because James said, if you offend, one. you're guilty. Oh. Y'all understand that? Amen. So now when we start to look at it from a natural standpoint of a husband and wife, and we start to transfer this over to a spiritual standpoint, we can see now why we don't actually get the results that we try to get from God. Because everything God tells you to wear, you don't wear, so I'm already angry now. Keep my eyes out. Because if I tell you it's an abomination, I, hate, I don't even want to look at it. And because you put it on, I love you, but you got it on, it makes me not even attracted to you. It takes me away from you. So now we start to look at when you ask God to do things or ask God to come in and give you things, God can't do it because he's looking at everything he asks you to do, you're not doing. You want to do the things that provoke God to anger. Y'all got me? Let's see what he told right here in the 32nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 20. Wonderful Savior. That's a conclusion to the matter. By the end of it, you should get it. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Give me verse 14. You still got Deuteronomy 12 chapter, 4 chapter, 2 Roman. Hold that 4th chapter. I'll come back possibly and get that. Listen. Butter of kine. Butter of kine. And milk of sheep. And milk of sheep. With fat of lambs. Yeah. And rams of the breed of Bashan. What happened, son? And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Yeah. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Come on, son. But Jeshurun waxed fat. But Jeshurun. Who is Jeshurun, brother? That's Israel. He waxed fat. What did he do? And kicked. And kicked. What started happening? Woman get in there, start getting stuff for her thing. She do not she think she can say anything. Start flopping off at the mouth. Ain't that right? She done heard, I'm every woman six times. It's only me. Huh? Now, all of a sudden, now, he said, as soon as you got what you wanted, got you some stuff, he said, all of a sudden, now, you start to kick. You don't wax fat, you kick it. Come on. Thou art waxing fat. What happened? Thou art grown thick. Listen. Thou art covered with fatness. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him. Mm. What else happened? And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. This is what happens sometimes with husband and wife. Wives will forget what a husband have done over a course of time and start to feel like it's them and they start to lose respect for him. He said, you don't wax thick now. You don't got fat. And all of a sudden now, you don't start, you don't really pay attention when I tell you to do something. You start doing your own little thing. Huh? This is why in the third chapter of the book of Isaiah, you find out he said he stripped her. Didn't he? He said because she walked with, with and stretched forth neck. She took a proud look on him. So what he started looking at, he going to do? Just like a husband, you look at, you got your wife, you give her some things and look like those things got her out of control. What you start to say? I tell you what, let me, I'm going to get that. I'm going to sell it. What? I'm getting rid of that. You sit all day, all day and watch TV, that TV out of, what? Now you start to draw attention. Now they start looking at, now I'm going to lose these things. You understand what I'm saying? See, you can see it from a natural standpoint, but you haven't paid attention spiritually. This is what he tried to tell them they were hypocrites. He said, you can discern the face of the sky, but how you can't discern the time to come to the word? How is it that we hadn't understood that from a marital standpoint when we're in marriages and we plain to see it? Anything that a husband looks at that's going to pull his wife's attention, that's going to keep her from doing what he asks her to do. You call and you tell her, listen, I'm going to be home at such such time, have this or this ready, I want to get, and you get there and you find out somebody was over at the house. And I... Oh, they, they were over here, and, and I forgot. I don't want them back in my house again. If they called you to forget, I don't want them back in my house again. 
That ain't right. Listen, I don't want them back in my house. Because all you're looking at, what I told you to do is what I needed done. And if that was the thing that kept you from doing it, that's the very thing I don't want anymore. If you burned up something I told you to cook and you were doing something, whatever, I tell you, when I tell you to cook me something, I don't want you fooling with me. Whatever it was you were doing that caused you to burn it up. Isn't that right? Because I'm only mad. You're looking at the anger at you. I'm angry at you because this distracted you from doing what I told you to do. This is why God's so angry with us. And we pray and wonder why. I wonder if God's still angry with me. You still doing what he told you not to do? Yes. I wonder if God still hold that against me what I'm doing. Yes, if you're still doing it. The only way to get him to a point of repentance with you is you got to turn from what you're doing. When I talk to a couple and I try to counsel them, there's no way to let them leave that doing the same thing they're doing. Otherwise, we're going to have the same problem. By the time we leave that, we're going to better the relationship. Something will ever arouse and call that problem. I got to get them to a point of saying, we can't do that. This will fix the problem we got. We just got to stop doing what brought you in here. Y'all got me? If you're going to fix a problem with God, you got to fix what brought you in. Why are you here? Oh, I had a, a bad drinking problem. Let's make sure we don't drink so we don't have to keep coming back dealing with the same thing. Why are you here? I had a big lying problem or a drug problem. I had a fornicating problem. I had a doja problem. So since you're here, let's fix what brought you here so when you leave, you ain't got the same problem. If I let a couple leave out of here with the same thing that brought me in my office, I can only expect the same result. I have to at some point get them to a conclusion of we got to not do what brought us here. We can't do that. We see we're here. We look at the damage of why we're here. We, let's assess the damage of why we're here. Then they come back looking saying, I got it. I got it. Exactly. That's why y'all here every week. We are assessing the damage that got you in a situation where God got a controversy with you. Just like a husband and wife have a con- God got a controversy with you. Because you hadn't done what he asked you to do. And then you keep saying, what's the problem? When I'm sitting in as a mediator telling you that the problem is not with him. The problem is with you. Because when I get him in and he start telling me, I don't care how emotional a woman gets, he starts saying, hold on, baby. Didn't I tell you, sir? Well, yes, sir. And then I just, yeah, and, and then I just said, now I got to turn the table look at saying, so you were told. Yeah, but we can't butt the situation. You can see why you crying. You can see why he's angry. Simply because you were already told. It would be different if you had known. That's why God covered himself. It made no sense to bring me God. God can't bring me no problem. And he did not find out nobody knew. Because if I'm going to be a fair judge, I got to say, to be honest with you, you weren't really clear. You never told her. But since you've been told, and I'm a witness that you've been told, and there's evidence you've been told over the course of time, over and over, it makes sense his anger being at you. You got me? When he told him, he wanted to show her all his anger at one time. Let me just shake these mountains. Let me just darken these clouds. Let me just start doing some flat. Let me make some rumbling. So you know that whenever these are violated, you already know where this is at. You already know where this is at. Once any of these are crossed, it's going to get dark. You're going to start seeing a lot of flashing. It's going to be a lot of rumbling and shaking. Because at that point, I know I told you, you sat here and you agreed, said, I don't want to see your anger no more. That's why they said, don't let him talk with us. I don't want to see it again. So you've agreed to this when you come in here. You got to start looking at what you're in. Sometimes you find people trying to run and skate. They man, you saying, but you signed up for it. Didn't the man tell you for better and for worse? Didn't they tell you for richer and for poor? Didn't they tell you for sickness and in health? To what do you part? You still living. You still in a committed relationship. You still in a committed relationship till you leave him. What we at, son? The 12th chapter? Give me the 12th chapter. Amen. 12th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Listen. 12 and 1 be fine. Come on. Amen. These are the statutes and judgments. These are the statutes and judgments. Which he shall observe to do in the land. Y'all see that? This is what you supposed to observe to do in the land. Which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to, to possess it uh-huh. all the days that ye live upon the earth. Look at that. And how long a mom before be bound to her husband? Sound familiar? You're supposed to do everything he asks you to do. To women. So I got to do everything you do. When I get to tell him, oh, when? You got to do that as long as you live it. This is why he tried to tell you the woman that hath a husband bound by the law to her husband so long as he live it. So God's still living. So you still married. 
You ain't pay attention, he told you about the woman. As long as the man living. And you know who he was speaking to? Them that know the law. If y'all know the law, since God ain't dead, you still stuck, you got to obey him. Listen. Ye Go shall on. utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. Uh-huh. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. Come on. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods mm-hmm. and destroy the names of them out of that place. Uh-huh. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, uh-huh. but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out yeah. of all your tribes yeah. to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come. Y'all hear that? And where you wind up going? I just went with my grandmom for Mother Day over to her church. We got a violation. Because in this committed relationship, you were told to quick tear down their stuff. Don't do any of the stuff that they do. You're only supposed to come to his house. But what we wind up finding people do, they just went to see. They just happened to go over. They just wind up there before they knew it. When he told you not to do that. I told you the only place I want you to come is to my house. The only place I don't want you to tap is at home. If you tap something, tap their junk. Rip their junk down. Tear their stuff down. Because I don't want that stuff to be an impression on you. So you got to get rid of it in your mind. You got to cast it down. Because it's going to wind up bringing you into error. A lot of times we don't actually look at this situation from this standpoint. Come and get that fourth chapter again of the book of, uh, the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 4. Jump down, what's that one? 28? Let me see what 28 say. Oh, well, give me the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. This is 4 and 28. Listen. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. So what it is, verse 28, jump up and give me what? Finish up at 24. 26, I mean 25. Listen. When thou shalt beget children the children's, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, yeah. and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image, uh-huh. or the yeah. likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God. Now, you, you know something that's real funny about that? Some women did better before they had kids. Look when he know they're going to corrupt themselves when they begin to have kids. Kids play a big impression on people. Because a lot of times people want their kids to have a better opportunity than what they have. Mm-hmm. People want their kids to get an education. People want their kids to grow up and do stuff they didn't do. There's a lot of stuff I didn't get to do when I was a child. And I'm not going to have my child walk around here. And my child ain't did nothing. And my child grew up without a childhood. And my child grown up hate me because I ain't let them do stuff. Didn't let them go places. They are a child. And a child need to go. He said, and guess what's going to happen you remain long in the land? You're going to have children. And notice after they had children, when they're going to get off. Some people that are married, they got more problems once they got kids. Because somebody started to lean to the child. Somebody started to cater to the child. And then it started to cause a problem. And then it caused you now where you wind up getting cut off. It's amazing. I don't know how y'all don't see it. Come on, finish it up, son. Come on, back to 28. Back to 28. Come on. 4 and 28. Deuteronomy. And there ye shall serve God's. The work of men's hands, wood and stone, yes. which needs to see nor hear, uh-huh. nor eat nor smell. Come on. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, uh-huh. thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Come on. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, yeah. even in the even in the latter days, yeah. if thou turn to the Lord thy God uh-huh. and shalt be obedient unto his voice. Yeah. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Listen. He will not forsake thee, he will. Uh-huh. neither destroy thee, Come on. nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Come on. For acts now of the, of the days that are past, Come on. which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth. What happened, son? And acts from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is. Like what? Or hath been heard like it. Come on. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire? Come on, son. As thou hast heard and lived. What else, son? Or hath God a say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation? Y'all hear that? Ain't never happened. 
You're the only woman I ever looked at. He said, I ain't never even started to go get another woman. Never even happened. Huh? I ain't never even had a conversation with another woman. You listen to some people talking about he appeared, God appeared in Asia and he was talking to some, uh, some Asian over there. He was speaking Mandarin. Never happened. God went to South America. He was saying, uh, seeking for at least $40. He said, now this is, this is, although it's funny, you look at it unlike us, he's showing you his virginity. He's showing you being chaste. As Paul talked about, we started in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, that I might present you as a chaste virgin. A virgin is somebody, you know what they always use when they describe a virgin in our book? What was it? What else they use? They describe something about them. My brother hit it. Didn't know a man. You know why they use that? Because it looked like God. I don't even know nobody else. The Bible told you that Mary knew not a man. These ignorant people walk around talking about, oh, they lying. You tell me she didn't know her daddy? That's not talking about that. It was talking about knowing sister. She never engaged in a relationship with a man. So we look at God. He let you know, I don't know another people. I've never been with another people. I never even start. Some people have gotten hot in moments kissing, and they almost gave up their virginity. He said, it never happened. It never happened. I didn't almost start to give it. He said, it never happened. This is important for us to know, because a lot of times for a man, he looks and say, that's good. And when I walk and walk around, look at, look at all them niggas. Y'all niggas keep looking. Ain't none of y'all had them. That's a pride thing for a jealous man. Knowing ain't nobody else been with her. It never happened. Ain't nobody you worry about. None of them ain't her exit because she don't know him. It never happened. So now we start to look at, we can see where we have, we say, God is similar to us. No, stupid. We're similar to God. He told you I'm jealous. God ain't got that from us. We got it from God. So I want me a woman ain't been with nobody. We got that from God. He wanted my people ain't been with nobody. So when you start to really look at God, that was the purpose when he told you in Genesis, let us make man in our image after our likeness. It's only natural you want some of these things, you become angry at some things because you got God. You're like God. Mm -hmm. That's why he said in our law, did not I say ye are? Makes sense, don't it? Now, this is why he was so angry, because had you looked at this from a natural standpoint, you should have understood the spirituality of it. Y'all got me? Come on, someone, I got you all in front of me. The Revelation 16. Come on, we're going to try to move along. Revelation 16. 16 and 14. Let's see what this say. Oh, brother, give me Revelation chapter 19, I think is what I want. No, make it 18. Revelation 18 and 4. Listen to the book. For they are the spirits of devils. They are the spirits of demons. Devils are not plural. Demons is actually what it will say. They just call it devils, plural, but it's demons. Come on. Working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Uh Uh-huh. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Yes. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. That's what I try to tell y'all. You probably be watching and keep your garments. A virgin for to wear white. So keeping your garment, being able to be fit to put it on. You can't put it on if you're not a virgin. You don't even see women now, they know the conviction. They go out there, some of their friends, they get on and be like, you ain't finna put that on, I know. So what they start doing, they'll get off white. People ain't smart, and they, the crowd just assume, okay, it's hard to find white. So got, my wife told me when I was telling about doing the white, buying the white, she said, you can always find white. White always available. People don't want to get it. People ready to get off white or finery. I don't want to get white. White gets stains in it easy. I'm going to get an off white. They get off white because they already know they ain't fit to wear it. So now we start looking. That's what he started looking at. Blessed is he that keepeth his garment. You're able to put it on. Come on. Lest he walk naked. Listen, to that. lest he walk naked. And they see his shame. And they see his shame, just like Adam and Eve did. How your shame started to come up. The Bible tell you whose God is there what? Whose glory is what? See how it works? Because now you start to allow your appetite for other things to come in, and now you're not able to put on what God has already purposed and ordained for you. God had already prepared something for him. When a man marries a woman, he ain't marrying her for no clothes. He married her to be naked. Yeah. Yeah. 
You think he's trying to take her home and see how long she can sit around there and lay around that white dress? You can take that off. That's the reason they could lay naked. They was at home. They was in the province of their home. Where else would you be naked at? So we sit in the kingdom. We look at God. Look at this is appropriate for you. We're in an appropriate place for this. People don't look at this. Y'all, are y'all really conscious? Yes, this is appropriate for two people that's in a committed relationship. This is where it should be done right here in the privacy. Outside the God, this ain't appropriate. That's why God made us something. When you go out in the street, I don't want you wearing what you wear at home. Since he don't put in the street, he look, I don't need you wearing what you wearing here in the street. Mm-hmm. I guess they'll wake up one day. Come on, son. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Come on. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. Uh huh. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven. Come on. From the throne saying, it is done. It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. See that? Voices, thunders and lightning. Come on. And there was such a great earthquake. What happens? Such as was not since men were upon the earth. Wow. Wow. What you think it was like when they were sitting there and he was talking to them? What you think it was like in the days of Uzziah? Come on. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Come on. And the great city was divided into three parts. Yeah. And the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God. And great who? Great Babylon came in remembrance before God. What happened? To give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to pour it out on them. At the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation. 18 and 1. Wonderful Savior. Amen. This is 18 and 1. Listen. And after these things. What happened, son? I saw another angel. Hold brother. You give me the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation. See that about 14 and about 9. Hold that for me. Listen. I saw another angel come down from heaven, yes. having great power, mm-hmm. and the earth was lightened with his glory. Yes. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, What did he say? Babylon, the great, is fallen. What happened, son? It's fallen. And what happened? And it's become the habitation of devils. That's what done happened to Iraq. It's fallen, become the habitations of devils. That's book. Iraq is Babylon. Amazing, that government is fallen, hasn't it? They tell you now it's been taken over. U.S. over there. Halliburton over there. The English companies over there. He told him it came to habitations of devils. What happened to us, son? And the hold of every foul spirit. Oh, my. he said we come to cage of every foul spirit. Come on. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. There's a lot of cages. Come on. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her, of her fornication. Y'all hear this? All the nations are drinking of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh huh. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth what are, waxed, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Y'all know what happened. Even when you look at these people, companies that went over there to Iraq, mm-hmm. they're making so much money through Halliburton, yeah. it don't make no sense. Don't pay no taxes. These nope. folks getting paid. Hey. Y'all don't realize this stuff actually happened, though, right? Yeah. No people, company, people, people got the military, they going to Iraq as contractors because there's so much money to be made. Yeah. That's what he told these folks don't wax rich. Halliburton was finna fall under before he became vice president under George Bush. Dick Cheney, he had wrecked Halliburton. They were bankrupt. They got in the Iraq and they made filthy money. Filthy. They took over everything. And now all these countries and companies come over there and they waxing, they waxing rich through her. Come on, son. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, What did he say? Come out of her, my people. And what happened? That ye be not partakers of her sins. Neither do what? And that ye receive not of her plagues. That you don't receive of her plagues. Listen what happened. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And what happened? And God hath remembered her iniquity. What happened? Reward her even as she rewarded you. Rewarded who? Reward her even, even as she rewarded you. Talk what happened. And double unto her, double according to her works. What happened? In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. The cup that she gave you to drink. He said, make sure she get it stronger than you got it. At the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation 14 and 9. Listen to the book. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, 
If any man worship the beast in his image. If any man worship the beast in his image. And receive his mark in his forehead. And receive his mark in his forehead. Or in his hand. What happens, son? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Then I tell y'all I was jealous. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going you're gonna to go and worship the image. What did I told you when I got you? About in the images. Not to bow down before him. I told you I was the only God. I was the only husband. I don't want you down at no nigga feet, wiping his feet, cleaning his feet. I don't want you getting nothing for no nothing. Don't cook him no food. I want you cooking. A, a jealous man, I have a fit. He walk in white cooking something to eat for some other man. Mm. He walk in like, what, who that for? Oh, I'm cooking it for this, this guy. Listen, I know I, I just unplug the stove, get the stove, just throw it over the balance. A jealous man, he looking at saying, you know I'm jealous. Why would you be in my house cooking a dinner for another guy on your job? I'm trying to figure out, you know somebody on your job you'll cook a dinner for? I'm finna take the stove out and chunk it over the done balance and the food. Because at this point, rage coming through. You know, and you know if this has happened, this ain't the first time. When I say the first time, maybe not have thrown the stove away, but the mere fact that I got angry because another man has been mentioned, because of behavior is finna be done for another man that only should be done for me, because I told you I was the Lord thy God. Ain't that right? You should worship me. Right? I want all your heart, all your mind. I don't want no other nigga got in your mind. I start talking to you and tell you something. I said, well, look, baby, we're going to go, you uh, know, we finna um, do such and such. And what we're going to do is such and such. Yeah, but I know Leon was saying. Have mercy. Then I ain't got your mind. If you just told me what Leon said, and I told you what we were finna do, and you told me, then I ain't got your mind. Y'all have me? I ain't got your heart. Ain't that right? When you start to desire something else, I told you, I really, I really like Brother Joel. I'm supposed to have your heart. If I tell you something, anybody you should desire first should be me. If there's anybody who should be able to tell you something, you should listen, it should be me. Because don't forget, I'm jealous. We take this and transfer it over to God. Now you're going to go back and recite Baptist behavior, Baptist ways, apostolic ways, Christian ways. He's looking at, when I took you, I served you from these things. Which means I don't want to see them. I don't like them. Don't bring them before me. Once you see them, you're supposed to quick tell them down. That's why Paul told you the weapons I walk for not caught them, but mighty through God. To the pulling down a stronghold, casting down. Because old stuff going to come in your mind. Old relationship, old people you knew, old behaviors you had and, and, and connections you had. Then you're going to have to cast them down. And bringing every thought into what? Into captivity. Contain it. Captivity is used to contain. That's why you put a man in jail or prison. You're trying to contain him. When he loose, he's a murderer. He's a robber. He's a rapist. He's a drunk. He's a crackhead. He's a drug dealer. He's a child molester. So you cage it in. So when these thoughts and actions come up, you've got to bring them into captivity unto the obedience of the Mashiach. Because that's what your husband told he wanted. I told you I don't want you talking about no another man. I told you I don't want you cooking for no another man. I told you I don't want you looking at no another man. I told you I don't want nobody else coming in pressing and putting nothing in your mind. I told you I don't want everybody in my house. How many men like that? I'm like that. I don't like everything. I don't like it. This is before my wife can't have my house. When people come here, they say, you know what? I ain't never been in no church before. Everybody can't come in. Have you ever been in somebody's house that, and you ever known anybody that don't like everybody in their house? That's amazing, though. But God can't be like, and where you think a man get that from? He get it from God, because God won't let everything in. He tell you when a person bleed, he look at, I don't want them in now. He said, Cause bang, when you look at when they bleed, they couldn't wear what we wore drawers. So he look at, she going to leak, she going to spin, she going to, I don't want you on my wife. So somebody nasty, you want somebody nasty to come in the house? They be like, you know, hold on, where you finna go? I'm going to come, you can't come in here like this. What I got to do? Go and change your clothes. Mm -hmm. I got stuff all over my shoes. I'm finna walk in on your white car. You said, what happened? You want to take them out, and we tell folk to take them out. That's amazing, though. When we put these customs in our home, we have in our, in our behavior, all of a sudden, they practical. When God got them in his house, and that's where we got them from, he impractical. Mm -hmm. You tell me I can't come sitting down. You smut, sweaty, musty, and stinking. No, you ain't bring your behind in him. You got on earring pants and make up your head, and no, you ain't coming in him. You see how it works? We got it from God. But see, this is why he started letting the people know you're hypocrite. You'll hold these customs for you, but you won't acknowledge my custom. What are them people in need? 
Huh? What if they really honest, but they just stinking and nasty and funky? Huh? Why you don't let strangers come in your house when they knock on the door, ring the doorbell? Why you don't open up and tell me, come on in, you might be an angel. You watch them. You say, I don't know you. You don't come in here. Mm-hmm. But then when God put that stand, all of a sudden God is not practical. That's why he said, are not my ways equal? Your ways unequal. Man, God shoot us in the foot all the time. All God love when you do that stuff. You to make everybody take their shoes on they come in your house. But you don't want to do it for him. Mm. He love, he just be sitting there just watching. Say, oh, okay. You got good understanding. Real good understanding. They come to your stuff. You just ain't got it when you got it for me. All of a sudden, we dumbfounded. We ain't sure. I just don't see God being like that. <laughs> it's real dangerous not to have knowledge of God. That's mm-hmm. why we him. Amen. Come on, finish that 14 chapter. What Amen. verse we at? Verse 10? Yes, sir. Listen, Revelation 14 and 10. Listen. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Wow. Somebody go in there going to take up another God? Somebody, you going to go take another man mark on you? Huh? Oh, that's just beautiful. You got your wife, and she going to go. Just use your brother. Look at you. She going to go get a guy name on her own, Eddie. You, gonna, you ain't going to be upset with that, are you? That ain't going to bother you, is it? You're going to be enraged. Am I correct? You're going to be fair. He looking at it. So I just set out that I put a mark on them that do what I do. We watch the same movie. They, I cry. She cried. He like, I like that. I like that woman cried about the same stuff I cried, like the same stuff I like. But she don't like what I like. I put my stuff on her saying, I want you to have my stuff. I'm going to get my name tattooed on her. She don't want that. She's going to come back. She's going to put Kim on her arm. But my name Tony. So what are people going to say when they see her and they see Kim on her arm? They say, oh, you married to Kim. Everybody, I'm going to have to put up there when I go somewhere. She married to Kim. So you and Kim together, this is going to be a problem in our relationship. Truth be told, y'all got on other people's stuff. So God is looking at you. wonder why God is angry with you because you're not wearing his brand. You're not carrying his name. You got other people's name. Or you got this. You must be a Christian because it's all over you. Then that's why I told you to change what you got because Christians wear that. Y'all see why he changed our apparel? Even when he brought us out of Egypt. Look, when we came out, we wore extravagant clothes and jewelry. Everybody wearing it. Christians wear it, don't they? Look what he did before he got a in. He said, I want you to take them off. We looked at it first. Oh, good. And now we're going to be looking like bum. I don't want you looking like them. See, we done through these people now. They thinking now to look godly is to look dressed up, to look extravagant, look expensive. He said, no, look like this. This is what I like. I brought you out, I put you on, it showed you up to look like them. The way you used to act when you wear it is how they act. That's why I took it off of you. That's why I broke you down from it. It was a reason why I brought you back to my liking. When he looked at when I came to the track, if people look and say, you know, this is what you can't put on God. Hmm. Might have fun you weren't complaining we first got together. Mm. So many women throw that on, ain't it? You start talking about what you don't like for them to do. Where God got you at. So you had on gold when I came and got you out of Egypt. You were wearing extravagant clothes when I came and got you out of Egypt. Uh-uh. So I ain't never liked it. I just went. When I came and got you, I used to being crap that I caught you with God. As soon as I got you out later on, I took it off from it. If you go back and think, you didn't have it on when I came and got you. So you know they didn't trap me. Matter of fact, the people I took you from, I killed, they wore it. People don't know. You ain't finna trap God up. You're not going to trap him up. That wasn't for be smart. That, that's how our wives would throw stuff on us. Might have fun you weren't complaining when we first got together. When I first got with you, you didn't have that stuff on. When I first came and got you, you was a broken person. You were contrite, just like how you told her the son was. When I came and got you, I took you out of bondage. Now since I done got you and I brought you up, just like Jess run, wax fat, and you kicked the, and you kicked against God. In that 30 second chapter right quick, we go to that 30 second. 32nd chapter, book of Deuteronomy, verse 20. Other brother, you give me that, give me that um, Ezekiel chapter 8 again. Let's just look at something. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 at verse 20. Don't forget what Jeshron did. Jeshron waxed fat and kicked butter, kind, and honey, and the uh, and all these sweet, nice stuff that he had. They talk about he wax facts and kick and grown thick. Not a grown fat. Look at 32 and 20. Listen. 
And he said, I will hide my face from them. Oh, now I'm not going to look at you. Because we already know his face against them that do evil, right? So now we're here in the book of Deuteronomy. He said, I'm going to hide my face from them. What's going to happen, son? I will see what their end shall be. Listen. For they are a very forward gen- generation. Come on. Children in whom is no faith. What happens, son? They have moved me to jealousy. Well, that's important for us to know, isn't it? Because the Lord told us that the Lord whose name is jealous. He told us God was a consuming fire. He was jealous. In the book of Revelation, you see he started to pour his indignation. I don't know. You know why? Because he was jealous. He was jealous. He told you how they had sick and took the mark of the beast. In the book of Ezekiel, before we know about anybody with a mark, we knew about Cain having a mark. After that, we wound up knowing about Ezekiel put a mark on him. And the people he put a mark on, he said, don't kill those. These do what I like. Kill the others. Now he's looking at these people, started worshiping other gods, and now they're taking on the mark. That's why he poured his wrath out of them, just like with Egypt. They had a mark about them. He poured his wrath and indignation on them. They looked different than the Jews, than the, than the Hebrews did in Goshen. There was a difference. Listen. With that which is not God. Listen. They have provoked, provoked me to anger with their vanities. And what happened? And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. What happens, son? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Listen what happened. For a fire is kindled in my anger. Then Deuteronomy just tells in the fourth chapter that he was a consuming fire. And after that, what did they tell us about it? That he was jealous. Now he just told you that a fire is kindling his anger. Why would this fire be kindled? Because he's jealous. Come on. And shall burn unto the Lord's hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and wow. set on fire the foundations of the mountains. What you think? The found- so they saw this. They've seen this before. Revelation said when this thing happened, it started shaking. Hadn't happened like this before since man was on the earth. These things are something you start to look at and you start to consider now. At the 8th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8 and about verse 3. Ezekiel 8 and 3. Listen. 8 and verse, what's the verse? Chapter 8 and verse 3. 3, amen. Let them get it. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 3. Listen. And he put forth the form of a hand. He put forth the form of a hand. And took me by a lock of mine head. He took him by his hair. Come on. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Come on, son. And brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Listen. To the door of the inner gate. It brought him to the door of the inner gate. That looketh toward the north. That looketh toward the north. I mean, come on, folks. This is plain fuck. Come on, son. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy? An image is something that reflects off of something. He said, when I went. He brought me to the door, the door that I happen to be at, which would be gate. For whatever reason was this door, it was facing the north. The door he would happen to be looking at would be the north gate. He told you this. And when I looked in the door, what did I see, Brandon? Where was the seat? What was the seat? That's the throne. Come on. Of the image of jealousy. The image of jealousy. What happened, son? Which provoketh to jealousy. Which provoke him to jealousy. He was provoked. He just told you in the 32nd chapter. They moved me to anger with that which is not God. Huh? They provoked him. They wound up provoking him to anger. They say him, saw the seed of him. I told y'all at the first I was jealous. I told you, you saw my wrath when I get upset. Now he brought the man right here to look and see the seed and it was jealousy. He saw God. He saw an image reflecting of jealousy. You could look and see the anger on his face. What happened, son? And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there. Look what he saw at the the throne. The glory of God of Israel was there. Come on, son. According to the vision that I saw in the plain. What happened, son? Then said he unto me. What did he say? Son of man. Son of man. Lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. What happened? So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north. Yeah. And behold northward at the gate of the altar. Yeah. This image of jealousy in the entry. Look at that. Come on. He said furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. Now. We start to look to consider. He already told us these things. We've already been instructed, and he found them in violation. So he brought him in, somebody that could be a witness against what he was getting ready to do to them, simply because of the fact 
I've already told you who I was. And he saw it for himself. He saw the rage from God. He saw the image of jealousy. He could see a man clearly that was upset because he found his wife doing something that was in violation of what he didn't want it done. He said, I could see it reflected from him. You can see on his face, this guy really hot right now. This guy really upset. His wife must have really got him mad. But then he wanted to bring him in and say, look at what she's been doing. This is what she's been doing. You walk in and you find diaries. You find, uh, you find love letters. You find underwear from another man. You find, you saying, come and look at what she's done. And you start to look to see, it's evident he's hot. And the proof is here. That the transgression is not with him. The transgression is with her. Whether you see it or not. Pick me up, son, at the uh, 27th chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 27. Pick me up at about verse 32. Listen. And as they came out, they found a man of serene, Simon by name. What happened? Him they compelled to bear his cross. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come into a place called Golgotha. What did that call, Simon? That is to say, a place of, of a skull. Come on. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. Uh-huh. And when he had tasted thereof, yeah. he would not drink. Come on. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Come on. They parted my garments among them. Yeah. And upon my vesture did they cast lots. Come on, son. And sitting down, they watched him there. Come on. And set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Come on, son. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. Where were they at? One on the right hand. Yeah. And, the other, and, and another on the left. Come on, son. And they that passed by reviled him. Wagging their heads. Come on. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days. What happened? Save thyself. Come on. If thou be, if thou be the son of God. Yeah. Come down from the cross. Yeah. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said. What happened? He saved others. Himself? He cannot save. Come on, son. If he be the king of Israel. What happened? Let him now come down from the cross. Yeah. And we will believe him. Come on. He trusted in God. What happened? Let him deliver him now. If he do what? If he will have him. Come on, son. For he said, I am the son of God. Come on, son. The thieves also which were crucified with him mm -hmm. cast the same in his teeth. Yeah. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Now from the sixth hour, what was it again? Darkness over all the land. For to when? Until the ninth hour. And what happened? And about the ninth hour, what happened? Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, uh -huh. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabathana. What did that to say? That is to say, my God, my God. Why is thou what? Forsaken me. What happened? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said. What, what did they say? This man calleth for Elias. And then what happened? And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge. And did what? Filled it with vinegar. And did what? And put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And what happened? The rest said. Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Come on, son. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice. What did he do? Yielded up the ghost. And what happened? And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in and, twain. Yeah. From the top to the bottom. Uh-huh. And the earth did quake. Uh-huh. And the rocks rent. Yeah. And the graves were open. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. That's good, brother. Anybody caught in vain? Wait. Let us hold in this thing. Pick me up at the sixth chapter, fifth chapter of the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter five. I just made him read all that. Numbers chapter five. This is the book of Numbers chapter five. Jump down and give me about verse five. I don't even want it, but it'd be something you need to know anyway. <laughs> Numbers chapter five, verse five. Listen, turn them up just a little bit. Andrew's a little low, just a little bit. Tim had a blast, and then he brought her down to itty bitches. Itty bitches sound. Come on. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Yes. When a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit. What happened? To do a trespass against the Lord. And what happened? And that person be guilty. Yeah. Then they shall confess their sin which they have done. Yeah. And he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof. Come on. And add unto it the fifth part thereof. Come on. And give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. What happened? But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, what happened? Let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord, yeah. even to the priest, beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. You hear that? So you give it unto the Lord, you give it unto the man of God. He said, let it be made unto the, he said, let it be given unto the Lord. He said, let it give it to the priest, like you do the atonement. Come on, son. And every offering... Of all the Kadesh things of the children of Israel. What happened? Which they shall bring unto the priest. Which they shall do what now? Which they shall bring unto the priest. Which they shall bring unto who? The priest. What happened? Shall be his. The Lord said everything you bring. And you probably bring it to the Lord. It probably be Kadesh. He said that's supposed to be mine. Listen. And every man's hallowed thing shall be his. If you got something you done consecrated to the Lord, you bring it. He said, let him have it. Come on. Whatsoever any man giveth the priest, it shall be his. I gave you pastor something. Did he get at you? Did he get at them? Who is he saying supposed to be? What, whatsoever any man giveth the priest, it whatsoever shall be anything his. Whatsoever anything giveth to who? The priest. Every, whatsoever any man giveth to who? The priest. What happened? It shall be his. He said he do the service. I told you, but some in there for you. Keep going. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, "What happened? Speak unto the children of Israel and speaking, say, unto, "This I'm supposed to be speaking to y'all. Tell me what, what I'm supposed to tell them." And say unto them, "Why? If any man's wife go aside, if any man's wife do what now? Go aside. What happened? And commit a trespass against him. What happened? And a man lie with her carnally. What happened? And it be hid from the eyes of her husband. And it be hid from the eyes of her husband. What happened? And be kept close. And it be kept close. And she be defiled. And what happened? And there be no witness against her. And there be no witness against her. Neither she be taken with the manner. Neither is she be taken with the manner. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him. And the spirit of what come on him? Jealousy. Come upon him. What happened? And he be jealous of his wife. And he be jealous of his wife. And she be defiled. And she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him. What happened? And he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled. What happened? Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest. And what happened? And he shall bring her offering Y'all for her. Y'all didn't pay no attention. They brought Jesus to the priest and the elders and the scribe. I told you I know you wouldn't catch it. You weren't supposed to catch it. You don't get paid to catch it. That's what I get paid to do. Listen. And he shall bring her offering for her. And he shall bring her offering for her. The tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. Yes. He shall pour no oil upon it. Yes. Nor put frankincense thereon. Yes. For it is an offering of jealousy. It is an offering of jealousy. Come on. An offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord suffering till he come. He told you this do for what was again? I wonder why he wants you to drink that cup to remember him. Book of Numbers told you first, it's going to be for a memorial or remembrance. Listen. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take Kodesh water in an earthen vessel. And of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, Come on. which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. Mm. Wow. The priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. What happens, son? And the priest shall charge her by an oath yeah. and say unto the woman, if no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. Uh-oh. 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 Tight, ain't it? That's why you don't need the Old Testament. It's good to get rid of these books. Because they have nothing to do with what we're doing now, does it? Absolutely nothing, does it? 
But all of a sudden, when the spirit of jealousy comes, here come a cup. At the 27th chapter of the book of Matthew. 27, 14. Let me just check something out. Listen. And he answered him to never a word. And he answered him to never a word. In so much that the governor marveled greatly. Come on, son. Now at that feast, the at governor. At that feast, get what they want to do, Leon. What tell me what happened, son? The governor was wont to release him to the, the people. The governor, for whatever reason was they, he wanted to let somebody go. Talk to me, son. Whom they would. Whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner. What was his name? Barabbas. They had somebody named Barabbas. What happened, son? Therefore, when they were gathered together. And they, they were gathered together. Pilate said unto them. Yes. Whom will ye that I release unto you? Tell me who, Pilate. Who you got? Barabbas. Barabbas. Or Jesus, which is called Christ. Tell me what it was with Pilate. For he knew. For he thought it. He knew. For he had no idea. He knew. For he knew. What did he know? That for envy. Or we'll say for jealousy. What happened, son? They had delivered him. They thought I was just taking them somewhere, didn't they? What are they going to do with that day? What are they going to do with that? Y'all didn't even know why he was offered up, did he? It had to be the jealousy vow. Yeah. That's how the cup came into play. Yeah. I knew you didn't catch it. I just let him read. You just follow along. Yeah. See, Pilate had more understanding than y'all did. I already know why they call him, because I know your law. That's why he told me they have a custom, that I should release one unto you. But I already know what you're doing. This is a jealousy issue. Yeah. Wonderful Savior. Mm. At the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I know you still holding y'all long. To make sure you get just a little understanding. At 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23. Amen. Let him get it. First Corinthians eleven twenty three. Listen to the book. For I have received of the Lord. That which. Which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord who? Jesus. The same. Night. In which he was what? Betrayed. What did he do? Took bread. He took bread. Come on. And when he had given thanks. What did he do? He break it. And did what? And said, take, eat. This is my what? Body, which is broken for you. This. Do. In remembrance of me. If you pay attention, he was also supposed to break, break, make some bread and don't use no oil. Mm. This was a memorial. See, at the first they tried to give it to him, he wouldn't drink it. They tried to give it to him the first time, he tells he wouldn't drink it. But at the second time, I'll go ahead and take it so you can see. Ain't no fault. The first time they tried to give him the cup, you didn't pay attention. I had to read. He wasn't drinking. So you know what they were thinking? Oh, this nigga done done something. Mm -hmm. Why you ain't drinking it? Because you already know you done messed up, don't you? You know you done messed up. He waited to the last and take it. Hmm? Listen. After the same manner also. What did he do, son? He took the cup. And what happened? When he had supped. He did what? Saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. What did he tell him, son? This do ye as oft as ye drink it. And, and what? In remembrance of me. Or we'll just say a memorial in remembrance of me. See, you know what these people didn't know? They don't know why this is here you to take this cup so you celebrate the resurrection. Because it was a vow of jealousy. Yeah. Huh? It was for remembrance. The reason why the woman was brought up was for iniquity. These dumb people go celebrate resurrection. They can't understand why you started talking about his death and suffering. Because you sitting here in your memorial, you're bringing in memorial your sins and your transgressions. This is about your iniquities. Right. Stupid dumb people. They think we backward. Memorial. He told you this is often as you do this. You do this in remembrance of me. Huh? Because I took the cup for your iniquity. He told y'all to reproach them that reproach thee. I ain't been the one out horn. That's been them people. Mm -hmm. 
They, they missed the whole time when he joined the first day he told their commandment for the Lord thy God. I'm a jealous God. You missed it. He tried to tell you I'm a consuming fire. Y'all missed it when he was on the cross when he got the cup the second time, didn't it? It became dark. It started thundering. It started lightning. That is the same thing happened when he gave you his commandments. Because this was the cup of jealousy. He told you when the spirit of jealousy come on the man. That's why he didn't take the cup the first time. He had to wait till the spirit of jealousy came on. That's the law. These dumb people don't know what they be doing. These people be wasting their time with their book. All these people need to be incarcerated. What are they going to do? Take them and check. Just take them. They're going to say, explain their fifth chapter. But... <laughs> Tony Smith. <laughs> Here with all these little private interpretation. All these be my private interpretation. Do they line up with the book? Amen. These people don't know what they do. They can understand why they offered them the cup two times. And that ain't the only reason. They ain't the only reason they gave it to her two times. You just got to be skilled. You just got to be skilled. The man was all law. He knew what he was doing. It was all law. It made no sense for him to take the cup when the spirit of jealousy hadn't moved over. You think he just told you he got dog over the eye of a dog? And after as soon as he had took the cup, you saw what started happening. It started thunder and the bell started ringing. You just read that in the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter. He just told you how the earth started shaking. Yeah. Why he started telling you the earth started shaking in the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation? Because he started saying they're worshiping other gods. They had taken the mark of them. That's when his anger started moving. He wanted them to take the cup. You don't even realize this is how we find you out. Because the truth be told, I don't know where y'all be when y'all leave here. I don't know what you be doing, but I already know how it happened when you get him. Spirit of jealousy move on God. Mm -hmm. Every year. That's why you come here for memorial. So you can recognize your iniquity. And you wind up taking the cup. Listen to what he told you. Let me see what he told you. They so dumb, they don't even know what they're doing. You don't even know what you start. You know what bad about them though? They don't pay attention in the first what he told he's gonna give you. In the first study, what was it? Your first and your latter rain. Y'all didn't pay attention how hard it was rain tonight and that mm -hmm. thunder and lightning. Cub come up. Spirit, they don't pay attention while we have to watch a whole lot of stuff we do. That's what I get paid to do. Look at when he started to take the cup. After he took it, then we just finished taking the cup. Notice what we wound up getting tonight. You wound up getting thunder and lightning and rain. Same thing he got. Amen. These people don't know what they be doing. But we be the people in error. We be the people in error. I be the one that's unqualified. Why won't one of these niggas come teach me then? Come on, son, finish this up. For as often as you eat this bread. And do what? Drink this cup. Tell them what you do, son. You do shew the Lord's death till he come. Listen. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread. Uh-oh, and do what? Drink this cup of the Lord. Tell them what happened. Unworthily. Uh-oh, come on. Shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So you do know during the, when a woman sat around, she took that cup and she would wind up and she would, and she would guilty. Then the book said that curse was supposed to fall upon her. That was the same purpose when y'all reading in Revelation 16, 18, and 14, you hear about God pouring out his wrath on them. Because that's the cup of jealousy. You made him drink it, huh? I say double for you. They miss all that. Y'all miss all that, don't you? He just started telling you, whosoever eat their bread and drink this cup unworthily. What did they do, son? Shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Listen what happened. But let a man examine himself. So what you were supposed to do, make sure you ain't been with no other God. Make sure you ain't been. If otherwise, when the spirit of jealousy move on him now, then comes the curse. Now the curse started to come up now. Listen what happened. And so let him eat of that bread. And do what? Drink of that cup. Listen. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. What happens, son? Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. You should never take the cup of, the cup of jealousy and you know good where you've been doing what you ain't got no business doing. What'd they do, son? Not discerning the Lord's body. Yeah. For this cause. Well, listen many, what happened. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. That cup will kill you. Mm -hmm. Once the spirit of jealousy move on God, what you gonna do? 
The spirit of justice is going to move on him. He told that's why the priest, when he got it, he took the cup and he gave it to him. He let him know, if you ain't done that, then let you be free from the cup. If you good, then you be free from the curse of the cup. But if you ain't, then let your belly swell and your thighs rot. That's why he started naming out. This is why people don't realize. He said, that's why a lot of y'all sick. Because you don't consider this is the cup of jealousy. So God going to show you, going to prove it out. If you ain't done that, take the cup. You've been doing what you're supposed to do, take the cup. But if you ain't, he said, then you ain't discerning. A woman going to be stupid. Now, no good and well, she smelled like whole juice. No good and well, she been messing around. He like, and you going to sit here and take it? Everybody to take it. The spirit move on it. Everybody got the spirit move on Take that cup. Spirit move, take the cup. If you ain't done that, then let you be free from the curse. But if you have. We don't have no Bible about his stomach swelling mm. and about his thighs rotting. He wasn't guilty. That's why he was able to take the cup. Huh? Wonderful Savior. That's why it's important for you to know why you're doing what you're doing. You would think it would make sense to celebrate the resurrection, but not with the cup. The cup was for jealousy. The Lord had been so jealous over his wife. Mm-hmm. And he set something up that will prove out that if you're innocent, you ain't got to worry about nothing. But if you're guilty, it's going to come and get you. Mm. That's why a lot of folks start ducking and running when they see the cup. That's why a lot of people you see, after you take it every year, some more y'all going to fall away. You're going to have to. Because once the spirit of jealousy move on God, he's going to get you out of him. That cup designed to catch who he's going to catch. Oh, he's going to get you. That's why every year people, some of y'all will be gone next year. You're going to have to, because when the spirit of jealousy move on God, it's going to show you shouldn't have took that cup. You shouldn't have took that cup if you were guilty. Huh? That's why y'all need to teach us so we get a proper understanding so we know what we're doing. Walking to be in behavior. That's what I try to teach y'all. The importance of y'all still have stuff in your heart. You still think you're smart. You're still separate. You're still divided. It's going to come up and catch you. That's why he set it up. He going to wind up catching. It's easy to just sit down and confess and get your life right. Quit running around trying to live and be a hypocrite. He going to find you out. Mm. That's what he going to tell you. Just like he told Cain, if thou do it well, should not thou be accepted? He said, but if not, later on, he wind up coming up, he killed his brother. He was walking around with a funny national attitude, wasn't he? He asked the man, why you walk around looking so sad? Nothing. How you? He said, if you do right, won't you be accepted? But if not, sin a lot that you're doing. You can take this cup if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Stop being a hypocrite. Stop being a false pretender. It's too late in the evening. What God can make you to do, that's what God like. Do what God like if you want God to bless you. Those of you that want the spirit, do what God tell you to do. You can't get it when you walk in control. God ain't pleased with it. You got to get in your mind. Change your concept, folks. Look at what the man is telling you. This is about your soul. Y'all keep thinking you can get away, keep hiding, keep hypocrite, keep dragging, winning, sneaking in, sliding out like snakes. Walk up like a man. We're going to tell y'all God made man upright. Quit sitting around procrastinating. Get your behinds up and do what you need to do. If you're not where you need to be, why you're not? Get your behind up and get where you got to be. God calling you. Since you've been taught what you know, what your husband like, what it is he desires, what he called you to do. If you want to receive something from him, then do what he asks you to do. If you want God's spirit, do what God telling you to do. Resist the things that God telling you to resist and hold fast to the things that are good. And the very God of peace will do what? Sanctify your whole, complete. Completely sanctify you. You got to do what God tell you to do, folks. You got to walk like God telling you to walk. That's the only way you're going to be saved. That's good, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. for saving. Did y'all learn